Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Lenny here. I have the honor of having RV in the house. And then we have Dave. We don't know what Dave does. He's just, <laughs> he's just, he's just the arm candy, but we have Dave in the house too. So guys, this is great because uh, I've talked to Dave a little bit. I follow your social media. I, I know a little bit about what you do, but, but not really. So um, what I like to do with my guests is kind of let them tell the story and, and I'll let y'all start where you want to, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, thank you for having us here. Um, I'm RV. I started investing about two years ago in real estate, um, right out of college, actually. I was in Buffalo, New York at the time and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life and was applying to a lot of different corporate jobs and I didn't get one single callback. And while being on the on a phone with my dad and, you know, kind of complaining to him that I'm not getting anything, um, he pitched me the idea of getting involved in real estate. Um, he didn't know much about it. He just said, you know, just look into it, see if there's anything you can do. And since I started looking back then, I just never stopped. Yeah. And it took me about a year later, maybe six months, months. I think six months yeah, like a, to get into it because right out of college, I went to coach for a year and uh, I kind of saw the potential, what she was doing. And she needed some help on the, when it comes to the construction side and managing yeah. the flips and the rehabs. So that's when I came into the picture. Uh, it was all in Buffalo, New York. And then yep. uh, last year, we moved to Nashville, Tennessee. Uh -huh. And uh, we started really um, getting focusing serious. a lot. Yeah, getting serious. Focusing. And yeah. now we are basically getting a, all of our deals are off market. I love that. And so I got a rule for you because mm -hmm. I coach a dude who used to be an NCAA coach now in health insurance and uh, Chris Grinzik in out of Toro well, in New York is my good buddy. He's bought tons of real estate, but he was a coach and he was making 5,000 a year. All right. So here's the new rule. If you want to be a coach, you got to go buy real estate first. And then when you okay. retire, then you can be the coach. <laughs> right. That, that that's true. what we talked with Dave before. Like, I was like, you know, you can always do this on the side or just for a hobby, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, that's so, a good rule. So, so when your dad said, why don't you get into real estate? What was the next step from there? Was it a book? Was it a YouTube? What, what got you started? Oh, um, actually, it was kind of like a right moment, right time type of thing. Uh, once I talked to him, I believe within a couple of days, I was driving and I heard this radio ad about a free real estate investing class that was going to be in person in Buffalo. So I just signed up for the class. And then, of course, you know, with the free class, they upsell you to like a three day seminar type thing. Yeah, she bought it. And uh, yeah, I bought it. It was around like $300, which for us was a big deal at the time. And then she came home and she was like, yeah, the seminar was really good, but um, I bought a few things. Okay. I bought a book or something. Yeah. I understand that. She's like, no, it's like three or $400. You know, in college, that's, yeah. that's so a decent he was, amount of, yeah. He was definitely pissed at me at the time, but it turned out for the better. Yeah. I love that. And so what did they teach you at the seminar? So honestly, that was like the problem. They didn't really teach us a, like a lot in terms of real estate, like how to get started and things like that. Um, because from there, you know, they upsell you to like this $30,000 coaching program. But uh, what they really talked about was the mindset and, you know, the opportunities of real estate and how you can make money. You know, like they talked about wholesaling, flipping, which to me, they were like new things because I'd never heard of them. So after that seminar, I was just left with like a million questions in my head, but I mean, super excited to get into it. So I just started reading any books I could, looking at a lot of YouTube videos at the time and just trying to learn and absorb as much information as I could. And then from there, eight months later, you know, after me doing all this research and trying to learn, we bought or I bought my first property to flip it which was quite a bit project. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> um, where'd, where'd you get the money for that to, to purchase that project? So that was a hard money lender um, that lended me the money for it. And then my dad kind of funded the down payment part of the, of the flip. Um, but yeah, I, I borrowed all the money from there though. 
And it was super, it was super easy, right? I mean, you made 150 K and you didn't do any work. It was so easy. Yeah, right? Then I retired. <laughs> then you retired. Okay. I took the interview over. No. Yeah. So how did so, it go? Honestly, anything that could go wrong went wrong with that flip. Um, I discovered, I mean, I knew it had some type of foundation problems, but I didn't know the extent of it. And I ended up replacing two of the biggest foundation walls of the house, which was like 35 feet long and eight feet high. So, I mean, it, it turned out from like a two month project to nine months yeah. to get all that stuff done. Um, way over budget of what I really originally thought, you know, and when I sold, it was like the best thing that ever happened. Did you make money or no? No, absolutely broke, not. Yeah, we broke even on that one, which at that point I was like, that's all I needed. I wasn't in the picture yet. Just want to clarify yeah. that I was not managing the construction side at that point. Yeah. And and so this is, I said something on a post the other day and my buddy was like, holy crap, that's a great idea. So he said, what are the top five things that a new investor needs to know? And I said, what you need to understand is that your first two to five properties is yep. nothing more than practice. Yeah, absolutely. If you look yeah. at it from that context, it's all good. And and so like, I look at that too. And like, my philosophy is you're not the first one I've heard. Yeah. Um, these young kids I was helping do a wholesale. I can't even tell you what bad things happen to them, but they got it done. They made yeah. 12 grand. And he goes, dude, thank God that was my first one. Cause now these other ones are going to be a breeze. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I completely agree with what you said. Um, I think what's important about it to mention, though, is like to make sure that it's not, you know, kind of putting you too deep in the hole to where you can't really get out of. Mm -hmm. But absolutely agree with what you said. So what was the what was the next one? So from there, I bought a second property, and that's where Dave came into the picture. Um, it, it was a flip again. It was, a Dave, was Dave part of the, the contract? Did you say, here's the house, and then I get a tall, dark, handsome man? Is that, <laughs> is that, is that, because that's a damn good deal. I'll take that. Right. Deal. Yeah. No, so Dave didn't really have much choice at this point. I kind of fully dragged him along. The way this works, I used to work now, um, she used to buy the house and then tell me. Yeah. You say get on the contract and then tell me like this is the house. These are the issues. Yeah. Can you help me fix it? And then he'd be like, but we you didn't even think this through, you know? Like, what about this? What about that? I'm like, that's the problem you have to deal with. Yeah. And so this day she gives me the budget, like, hey Dave, I think this flip is gonna be like twenty thousand. Like, nope, you can up that right. And I already I, I already know. So <laughs> okay. we do that all the time still. So. Yeah. And so do you have construction uh experience or I had a little bit. I just was handyman. My dad was always fixing stuff around the house, but never intensive, like taking down walls and doing yeah. drywall, all that stuff. Or I never really done that. Um, basically, just learned it by doing it, uh, making mistakes, paying a little bit extra to my contractors to fix my mistakes and do it right. <laughs> yeah. But end of the day, um, as you said, with practice, now I know exactly what it's supposed to look like. Now I know exactly how long it should take for a drywall guy to be done. You know, so all those little things is you can't mm -hmm. put a price tag on it. And and so in the second property, how did that one go? Way better. Yeah, that one went way better. I mean, obviously it wasn't like a huge profit. I think we made about 10 to 15 on that one. Mm -hmm. And then kind of helped us get the third one, which we ended up house hacking. And we it was a single family. We bought it with the intention to flip it. And we discovered that like the zoning allowed for it being a duplex. And at the time I had just learned about what house hacking is and, you know, how it can help you. And we were in the position where I was like, Dave, you know, I think this is going to be great for us to house hack. And we just, you know, did that as a third property that year. Mm -hmm. And then where did, where did the company go from, from, from that aspect after you lived in that third one? Yeah. So from there, then I actually ended up visiting Nashville. Um, for, for my brother's birthday, it was like a random visit. I, it was not random. It was not. It was you like to say it's not. Um, I mean, we'd never been to Nashville before or anything. So it was just like a city we picked to visit. But um, I really like I, here. There was so much opportunity when I visit. There was construction going on in every single corner. And, you know, I called him up when I was here and I said, Dave, we got to move here. Like, I don't know anything about it, but just from what I'm seeing. I mean, this is awesome. So, of course, he said no. <laughs> and then we moved. 
Yeah, she did it. She bought a house and then told me like, "Hey, I already bought a house. I can ask for like we're we're moving." So she. Yeah. yeah. So here's the deal, Dave. I don't even know if we're friends anymore because <laughs> me and her are friends because this is amazing. I don't even understand what's going on here. She's just like, "Here's how I'm going to get him to move. We're going to buy a house, and then he's not going to have an option." Yeah. This is great. This is amazing. I love this thing. This is so awesome. Yeah. So you are you telling me? Hold on, I gotta back, unpack this. Are you yeah. telling me that you came down there, saw it, and then bought a house? How did you buy the house? No, so I didn't buy the house when I was here. At the time, I was still trying to convince him to move, and you know we had a lot of family and friends up in Buffalo, and he was like, "Oh, are we gonna leave all this behind?" And I was just thinking of like the end goal, like the vision of how much we could do. And I started looking for houses when I was there. I connected with an agent down here and I started making offers, honestly, but that's about it. And um, I found one that I liked. I put on their contract. And I mean, obviously we were still in the, the inspection period, but I was like, you know, Dave, this is what's going on. So, um, yeah. But I, I came to that. We made a visit. I told her the only reason how I'm moving is I have to go visit. I have to go yeah. see what it actually is about. And but at the time where we visited, we were coming here to actually close on the property and do yeah. the signing. So, you know, it wasn't like he would could change. So I'm going to so I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Are y'all married or not? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to let you in on a secret, Dave, from a divorced 13-year-old, 13-year marriage in a new relationship. As men, if we just shut up and just to do what the woman says... They're, they're like 90% right, like all the time. So just follow her lead and you're going to be wealthy, healthy, and happy as shit. You're my best friend now. <laughs> so listen to him. I agree to some extent. Let, let me no, know. it's a some, well, no, you have to fight back <laughs> you, a right, little right. bit. All right. I'm separate. You have to fight back. But I love this. And so look, I'm only going to, I used to live in Nashville. I don't know if y'all know that. Uh, no. But I lived in Austin for nine years. But I want to tell you something. And this is something that's not talked about. And obviously, where you are in your life is totally up to you. I can't control that. Right. There is something to be said, because I live in Austin right now. And we're about to start it. I can't, I, never mind, I can't say that. So we're, there is something to be said to be around that energy, that, that drive when a city's taken off. And you're around these other investors and you meet these people that are doing bigger deals than you. I can't tell you what I call what I call it is called riding the wave. Mm -hmm. Like when you get on the wave and everybody's riding the wave together and the city's blowing up and there you can't put a price tag on the that level of energy, what it does to you internally inside of you that allows you to push farther as an investor to mm -hmm. see things bigger than you thought you could see. And, you know, I would just be interested to see, you know, since you moved there, like how, how's that changed everything? Um, well, Dave, do you want to? Drastically. Your... Um, yeah. I mean, I, we came to visit the sign the, for the house and I saw it. I saw the city potential. for, I think we drove around for 10 minutes, um, right. Um, after the airport and I was already sold, um, just based on my observations when it comes to the airport, they were expanding the airport. They were expanding highways. There were just suburbs. Um, there were new um, subdivisions, like everywhere. So that kind of told me, like, okay, she's right. And I, I love her. what you said because I think that's exactly what I felt. I just didn't have like words to put into, mm -hmm. you know, the way you did it. But that that's exactly what happened. I think I just like felt the energy of everybody like moving up, and that's why. In, in in a sense, and this is something you can take for you could steal it and take it for yourself. Yeah. I look at it in a different context. It's almost an honor to live a life riding the wave. And that's the way I look at it. And so when I was in Arizona briefly and we were traveling around the United States, you know, I asked my girlfriend, I said, you know, what do you want to do? Like, where do you want to live? What do you want to do? And I started thinking to myself, like, Elon Musk is moving to Austin. Joe Rogan just moved there. I know everybody. I hate Austin. <laughs> let me let me preference that i do not want to live in downtown austin yeah. i do not hate austin i love austin it's fun but it's a lot there's a lot going on it's 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 almost too much i don't want to pay those prices but I, but i get it you yeah. know but ultimately what's interesting is is that you can ride the wave for a 10 to 15 year period and set yourself up for the rest of your life and then you know for me the goal for us 
is probably in two to three years to to move to uh, Italy, and mm-hmm. and and go back and forth or South America or move to Colombia, yeah. and and just and just come back and forth and enjoy it and so on and so on and so by riding the wave and being a part of the madness, like what cracks me up about Nashville is that I used to live in Donaldson oh, and yeah. before Donaldson is happening and everybody goes, Oh, hell no. It'll never go over there yeah. ever. But here's what I did know. These were acre plus lots, huge dog parks right yeah. near the airport, quiet. And I said, this, this neighborhood right here is going to be everything. Yeah. And then, and then sure enough, funny story. I didn't find out till later. I didn't live there at the time. Grant Cardone's company bought the apartments in a huge package that I was living in. Oh, wow. So I was like, well, if Grant Cardone's buying apartments in Nashville, you know, yeah. it's about to get weird. Right. And so you can kind of see those little indicators, uh, yeah. uh you know, and so when you moved to Nashville and you bought that property, what have y'all been doing, uh, since in the, in the market? So um, from there, um, the property that we bought, we actually was a single family that we house hacked as well. We kind of turned the master bedroom into an Airbnb and we're just renting that out there to help with the cost at the time. And from there, honestly, we just got serious about doing our own marketing and being consistent and focused on getting deals. And ever since then, we we did great. I mean, 2020 was an awesome year for us, uh, the best year we've had in terms of real estate. and. We went to from, I would say, zero to like $500,000 in wholesale fees and flips in a year. No big deal. No big deal. Just zero to 500, you know. And honestly, my goal um, when I started in last January, I I told him, I said, I just want to get to 100,000. Like that number Mm -hmm. seemed so far away and unachievable at the time. So when we hit it, we were like, that's what's going on. Like, this is crazy. What's the goal for this year? A million. A million in terms of gross revenue. I don't like it. It's too generic. All right. Yeah. Wait, wait for it. <laughs> yep. No, got it. Okay. Uh, I got it. 1.28885, okay. All right. I like that. I'm going to write it down. 1.285, 113,000. One, two, eight, five, 113. Okay. So what I want to pull apart, because people would get mad if I didn't, is yeah. how the hell do you go from zero to 500,000? So what are the tactics? What are you doing? What, 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 what avenues are you investing? Yeah. So our first goal was to just start wholesaling to build some capital. And that's what we did. We started doing direct mail in January, about 2,000 to 2,500 letters, I believe. And that's when we, you know, got our first deal and, you know, we wholesaled that one for just like the regular $10,000 profit. And then we got a second deal and we did the same thing. And then we got, you know, a third deal and we flipped that one, which obviously the profit was higher. And then we just kept upping our marketing in terms of direct mail. And then we added on to like Google um, ads and like Facebook ads to kind of get more exposure as well. So that's when things kind of started blowing up. In terms of like um, deal numbers, it wasn't too many. I, we ended up with 15 that year or this year, but um, our fees were actually really high mm-hmm. um, on what we wholesaled and what we flipped and wholesaled. And this year, our goal is to try to get more in terms of deals. But I mean, obviously, if the fee is high, I'm not going to yeah. complain about it. Mm-hmm. 100%. And I know that y'all just closed like one of your biggest deals ever. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. you weren't in Nashville when that happened, right? Did I, oh. did I follow that line? Did they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so let me get this straight. Cause I'm, I'm pretty aggressive. They call me like li- mini David Goggins sometimes <laughs> when y'all listen to this fucking story and you tell me you have an excuse, I'm going to replay this for you one more time. <laughs> I'm going to do this. I'm just going to keep sending it to you. Yeah. So walk me through this story, how you made 130 grand. So um, this deal was actually a Google ads lead that came in. Um, how much lead- money did you spend on the Google ads? That's a good question. So our monthly, I'll tell you like our man- monthly average, because I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that's fine. Big deal, but it's around 4,000 a month. Okay. For Google ads. 
Um, so it came through Google ads. Um, she, this was in a market that we didn't even know the city at never the time. I mean, yeah, it. never even you, heard you of. Heard of it. Where's it at? Um, Scott Hills. Scottsdale? No, Scott's Hills, uh, in between Nashville and uh, Memphis, like this little no. tiny town. <laughs> no. That, exactly. So that was my first reaction. I'm like, what the hell? You know, I, I don't even know. Um, so it was this 40 acre farm house with a 4,000 square feet in terms of the actual farmhouse. And there was no comps whatsoever because it was the only one in the area. And uh, we talked to the lady. She was uh, very, very desperate and motivated to close and sell as soon as possible. Um, she wanted to close actually in four days from when we first had the talk with her. Mm -hmm. So it was like everything was happening really fast, you know, in terms of a couple of days that we had to get everything yeah. started. We, um, yeah, we almost kind of dropped it completely because we had no idea what we we're doing in that area. We didn't know the market. Yeah. So um, from that point on, I think we went to the appointment. Um, no, we made, didn't go to the appointment. Uh, the, inspector, the inspector. We did. Right. We got a full house inspection on that one because. How much did that cost you? I'm I'm trying to prove a point. Yeah. Here. How much did that cost um, you? The inspection was like three hundred and twenty. Oh my god, it's terrible. Yeah. Oh, three hundred bucks. Okay. All right. All right. So we were like, either it's gonna make us money or it's gonna save us from losing money. You know, that three hundred. So. The report came back terrible. At the mm -hmm. time, we were under contract with the lady at 180, 180,000. The report came back terrible. And I talked to Dave and we're like, you know what? We're just probably going to let this one go. And I called the lady to tell her, you know, I'm sorry. we. The report came back really bad. It has foundation issues and this and that. And she was like, I just really want to close. Like, I'll let it go for you guys at 100,000. So she just... <laughs> She dropped it by 80k just in one phone call yeah so she dropped oh. and i was like let me get back to you real quick and i told him like dave she just dropped the price like at this point i think even if the house is trash just the land <laughs> the land 40 should be worth land that. Is yes. worth so um obviously you know we called her back and said yes and headed to closing within like four days from there we closed yeah. Um, she got what she needed. She was um, happy. Um, that's, she was that's definitely the good thing happy. about this about this story that she was very happy yeah. because we helped her out and she was able to do whatever she needed to do with that money. And let me just point out, she had bought it, I believe, eight years ago for one hundred eighty thousand. So we got it for even lower than what she originally got it for. So at that point, we were like, "All right, this is going to be a deal, you know, for sure." Yeah. All right. We so didn't know how much from what that happened. Point. What happened from there? Yeah, so I found an agent. Uh, we listed it on the market on the MLS as is, as is uh, with no repairs whatsoever. So we got the first two days on the market, we got four offers right away. Um, we listed at 285 and we accepted an offer for 265. Um, they understood that they were buying it as is. I still ran an inspection on their own. Um, they just asked us to fix like a couple age back issues and we we're like, sure, you know, we'll do that. That it cost us around 3000. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we closed, you know, like three weeks later. <laughs> so, um, we netted around $135,000 yeah. on After that After paying off everybody, like our like yeah. manager and the agent, everything. Yeah. So we were all in for the deal at around 3,500, mm -hmm. you know, and then from there. All right, so three hundred bucks for the thirty five hundred for Jan. So seventy five hundred, let's just say, call it yep. that, to make one hundred and thirty grand. Hmm. Yeah. I, you know what? I dropped out of college three times, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's a damn good fucking return on investment. Absolutely, and honestly, even for us, it was like pretty unbelievable because this is something that doesn't happen often, and it's always something that you know it happens to other people, not us. So when it happened to us, we we're like still kind of in disbelief. Yeah. We're still, I'm still am a little bit. Honestly. Yeah. Because ultimately, the reason why two things: the reason why, and I noticed this yesterday about my, the reason why is because the vision and the goals for y'all are very big and and it's very clear. And so yes, you're very excited. It's awesome. But unlike other people who would go out and go to Vegas for three weeks, you're like, okay, that's great. Put it in the bank. We got more work to do. And yeah. that's what I love is like the, 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 the initial, I would venture to guess that the, yes, we want the money to freedom and Airbnbs and, and right. travel, 
but it's not really the end game. So the emotion is not tied to it. So it does, you're not going to like go party for 30 days. It doesn't matter. Yeah, like we're just back to work the next day. Yeah. yeah. We're actually using that money to expand our business. Um, sure. One of our main goals is basically from the start to make from a hobby, from get from a hobby to a money-making business. And so we're this year, we're going to expand, get an office, um, hire two more acquisition managers, up our marketing. Um, yeah. So we're going to spend some money now, which is a little so, bit scary. So I would be, <laughs> yeah. I'd be my, here's my only caveat. Okay. Cause I spent many a times and most of my friends are the bigger wholesalers in the country. Make sure all I ask is that your gross to net profit is very large and mm -hmm. don't just throw money at marketing because, and like expand because there's a lot of guys that I know that run, I have a buddy out of Arizona, happy to introduce you. You totally need to get a call with him. Yeah. He does 850 K a year wholesaling as a side hustle with $0 for marketing he does a $40 million brokerage with 10 agents, no office. Wow. And he, and he flips 12 houses uh, at a time. Wow. That's amazing. No office, no nothing. He does it out of, out of his house. And so I get it. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting it, but I think there's something there and, and to keep the cost low, because then if you want to turn it off and disappear to Columbia for a month, because mm -hmm. once you, once you get the office and once you get the people, then you're, then you're beholden to them as owners of a business. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense for sure. We'd love the introduction. For sure, of course. Well, that's just getting started. But, but well, to me, like, what's interesting, right, is something that you said in that is two things happened to me in that transaction. Is one, you you didn't need the deal, so she understood that about you, and and you know, kind of gave you what you wanted. Kind of. Second thing is, is I don't think enough people when they walk into a deal, they're so excited about the deal, they don't ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I'm on it. I'm on, I don't know if I can share it. It doesn't matter. I'm on a call yesterday and I'm talking about this piece of land and the lady's like a high powered agent. She's like, I'm like, yeah, we're putting this on it and everything. And she's like, awesome. Well, I mean, are you looking for more land? And I'm like, what? And she's like, well, my parents got 17 acres. They're about, to sell, they want to sell. It's off market. It's yeah. in the hottest growing area in Texas in the hill country. And she's like, you think you got a buyer? I'm like, yeah. I got a buyer. And then I started asking the questions like, you know, why do they want to sell? You know, right. what is this about? Like, are you involved in it? You know, and like, I don't think people, so now we have motive. We know mm -hmm. why Yeah, we have a number. We don't have a number, but we have a number kind of. And so because of my networking, what I did is I called um, my friend who runs a billion dollar development company. And he's like, I'll look at it. And yeah. Whether or not he buys it, he's going to tell me exactly what somebody's going to pay for it. Yeah. And then I can go back to them and go, you know, I told her, I told the agent straight up. Now, this woman is a savage. Yes. <laughs> it's her parents' property. And she goes, they're not going to give me shit. So I'm taking a commission on it. <laughs> and I said, and I said, listen, there's two ways we can handle this. We can handle this straight up yeah. or you can get a price from your parents. Their parents are still making, yeah. they bought it for like a hundred. They're going to make 1.6 million. So like, let's, you know, they're going to they be, good. It, gonna be good. But what I said is, or you can get a real price from your parents mm -hmm. and then we'll know what we're working with. And then we can go out and wholesale this for 200 grand and yeah. split a hundred grand each. And, and we don't have to worry about an agent fee yeah. and all that stuff. And she goes, Hmm, that's pretty interesting. And so, because I'm available and those options are out there, there's a bunch of different ways. Now, granted, I am more than comfortable closing that in a regular sense, right, right. <laughs> uh, you know, like, like money's money, but, but, but I don't think enough people explore options because they only view one option. Right. Yeah. And I, not, not that she would have, but I think that lady would have closed for less personally. Like she just wanted to get out. She needed the money. And by doing that, people ask the right questions. And so for y'all's business and just your life in general, what are the goals for the next couple of years? You know, what, what, what makes you happy? You know, I see that y'all like to travel a lot, obviously. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's kind of a thing, right? Yeah. So honestly, um, like Dave said, we're trying to focus on expanding the business and the ultimate goal is to move ourselves from the business, you know, just put everybody in the right place where it needs to be to the point where, we don't have to be there every day. Um, I don't know how we feel like we actually haven't talked about it, but like retirement. Um, I haven't thought about it because I like, I like being involved in real estate. I like doing it. So 
as long as I'm not, you know, doing it every single day, like for eight hours, I still want to mm. be able to work in the business and be involved in this mm. and that. I like the excitement of, you know, deals and things like that. I have a plan for y'all, but I don't want to, I don't want to share it on recording. So I'll tell you too, when we get off camera, because right. uh, I think it's a great idea. And it's something I've noticed by interviewing a lot of the people that y'all hang out with. And I, yeah. I think there's a vein of business um, that could be highly, highly profitable. Um, okay. so, We're but, but, opportunities. but, but, but what's great guys is, is in your story is so amazing is you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to buy stuff and figure it out. And so is a large portion of your business generated towards the flipping or the wholesaling covers most of the stuff for now? Honestly, it's a good mix. Um, like we have our criteria in terms of flips and if it doesn't fit that criteria, well, then we'll just wholesale it. And that criteria is very simple. We like to do quick turnaround flips. So if it needs more than like a month of work, we're just going to try and wholesale it first. Yeah. Worst case scenario, we're still going to keep it. Like if for some reason we don't find a buyer, because we always make sure to run the numbers the way that if we were not going to flip it, you know, somebody else would want to. Um, but it, it depends on the criteria, honestly. It just it just depends on that. Most of the time, yeah. we always have one flip going on. One or two yeah. flips going yeah. on at the same time. And if we get a lot of leads coming in, we just wholesale most of them or hotel yeah. most of them. And um, for anybody that's sitting on the fence or anybody that is thinking about getting in the game, what's your advice to to anybody listening to this? Um, honestly, it just starts small. Be focused. Get that first deal out of the way because that's like the hardest part of, you know, being involved in real estate. And then from there, you just got to be consistent and focused. I would say even before that, um, just get out there and start making offers. Honestly, the biggest thing that people don't really understand is when you're trying to get into real estate, you have to understand the game and you have to actually start making offers on properties to see if you can get it. If you can't sit at home and analyze deals, and analyze deals, and analyze deals, you have to actually go out there. I know a lot of people that want to get into real estate, but they haven't even talked to a real estate agent yet. Yeah. Maybe put a couple of offers in. So I would say just take that step to put an offer in. Even if it was a low ball offer, just go and, and get rid of that first feeling, first offer feeling, basically. And and don't uh and don't hang around us because we're gonna make you buy property. But because I gotta tell you this story, y'all are gonna love this. Yeah. So my boy Ruben, who runs a marketing agency and and just bought his first Airbnb, he's an agent investor. Mm-hmm. Where he starts a clubhouse room uh like three days ago. And, uh, I was just like, saw him in there and I was like, I'll pop in. Like I was like working out or something. We get to talking about life. I was just asking him about like, Hey, you know, what are you doing? My, my boy saw me from LA. So my boy is an off market specialist who does 60 to $160 million off market apartment deals. His first deal as a licensed agent was $60 million. Wow. And so he was on the beach in California. So he pops on, we get to talk about life. Well, this kid rolls in there. Didn't even know what he was like. He just rolls in there, 26 years old, engineer out of Texas. Two and a half years, he's been analyzing real estate deals. So for an hour and a half, he's got me, my boy who's doing $100 million deals and Ruben giving him advice. Yeah. And I like lit it at the end. I was like, I got all charged up and I was like... I was like, fucking buy real estate. I was like, stop being a put. I was like, you make 80 grand a year. You got an 800 yeah. square score. I'm like, let's fucking go. I'm like, I was like, just, I was fucking going crazy. Right. It's like my 30th call of the day. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so funny enough from, from clubhouse the day before he met my buddy Andreas, right. Who works for Diego down yeah. here. Yeah. And so long story short, I get a fucking DM last night. This son of a bitch put an offer in on a house yeah, last night. Wait for it. He said, the lender said, my credit's so good. My goal in a month is to buy a second house. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, he clicking on that button. Yeah. Like, you don't know, man. You just got to keep pushing and forward. People just need, like, a boost of confidence. Uh, maybe they're not surrounded by the right people around them, you know? Like, mm-hmm. we weren't in the beginning. Everybody around us did not do real estate. Mm -hmm. and you know when you're surrounded by people like that your goals are probably not going to be higher Mm -hmm. you know so the moment we came to nashville and we just started surrounding ourselves with only real estate people the that moment we're like wow i mean we would see people getting deals and it was like a good jealousy going on like i need to do that like i need to do more i'm not doing enough Mm -hmm. so when you're surrounded by the right people you know for sure and i haven't told you all this 
I don't know why. I'll just tell you on camera. So May 14th and 15th, I'm mm -hmm. um, bringing Construct Your Life Mastermind event. We're having a huge event with nice. Tyler Coble and uh, Evan Holliday's talking, speaking, yeah. uh, and now y'all are speaking. So oh, okay. if y'all are in town, I would love yeah. for y'all to share your wisdom and uh, y'all can be the wholesaling conversation. I appreciate the offer. If you're interested, because there'll be a lot of uh, dudes talking about whatever they're talking about. Who cares? <laughs> Development stuff. So <laughs> we need to talk about how we make some money. So, yeah. uh, but guys, if people wanted to find out more about you, uh, how would they do that? Uh, you can always find us on Instagram. I'm rvarvi dot c a r k a n j i, and I'm on Instagram as well, Dave dot a r l a u d. You can always find us on moneymakingduo.com. That's our website. I love it, guys. If you like this episode, make sure you send it out to your friends. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.